Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I'm doing a little back to school series as some of you are returning back to school. I know a, a lot of you actually are either just getting off for the summer or you still have some long way to go before you're actually off for the summer, before you actually are off for the summer. But I thought this video would be a good idea. A little while ago I actually did a video for um, incoming freshmen, a little advice video for them. So this video will be another part of that series but this will be five advice for incoming sophomores um that class of 2019 um so if you notice on youtube um you'll notice there actually aren't a lot of videos for sophomores i think that's just because there isn't a lot of advice to give to sophomores just because you guys aren't new anymore but i know there are a lot of things you know to come for sophomores that aren't you know, like something that are new and everything. But I know that once in a while after you guys get done with everything, you guys still need advice too. So I have five tips for you guys. So the first thing I have, I'm sorry, something just popped up on my computer, but. <laughs> All right, so the first tip I have for you guys are grades. And of course, grades are important. Grades are like the foundation to what you guys are gonna do, you know? So especially grades for you guys um i know a lot of teachers have told me this i've actually had friends um a lot of this happen to them um sophomore year is actually more important than a lot of people think it is um so what happens is people there are a lot of statistics that say that if you don't finish your sophomore year you're more likely to drop out of high school and sadly that's the fact and a lot of statistics prove that. I've had friends who didn't finish their sophomore year. They've just finished out of high school because they just didn't want to do the work. They just didn't have a lot of, you know, the grades put in and all that. And it really does suck. But, you know, there are a lot of stuff for you guys for you to finish those grades. And grades are really important. They really are. And there are a lot of opportunities to get your grades up. I know there, for some people, there are a lot of, you know, extenuating circumstances on why you can't get homework and assignments put in, like family members or anything else, like a pet died. But there are also extra credit assignments for some schools they may offer extra credit assignments you can do and to get those grades up or they may offer you know late grades that you can put in and a lot of high schools do that because when you get to college there are no late grades you turn it in or you just flunk out so it really does help you when you have extra credit assignments and when you can turn in grades late because you know a 50 is better than a zero so you do want to turn in those grades because they help you go along because they do what they do say about junior year is that it is hard I my junior year was very hard I did not like it it was very hard I will also be doing a junior video um, probably next week if I'm not busy but um, you know if you don't pass your sophomore year and you think your sophomore year is hard it's only gonna get harder and that's just how life is life is hard so you know grades are your stepping stone for your future so you have to stay focused and you have to get your grades done because that's just how life is life is really all about grades sadly that's the truth <laughs> okay so second tip um this is something that i've actually heard a lot of people say it's also something that i've kind of came up myself it's kind of a cute way of thinking about it but high school, if you think about it, the grade system of how it goes, it's kind of like a whole big family of how I think about it. So, you know, ninth grade's the, the youngest. They're ninth graders. That's what you just came from. They're called freshmen. And then now you're going into your sophomore year, 10th graders. And then 11th grade's the next year, which you will be going into soon. That is junior year. And then 12th graders, the so seniors, they're the highest, they're the oldest, they're the kings, as you so-called call them. So... You know, they are all your one big family. So I like to call sophomores and juniors the middle child, as you like to call them, because, you know, seniors are the oldest, freshmen are the youngest. So I like to call sophomores and juniors the middle child because in reality, that's what they are. They're not really leaving anytime soon, and at the same time, they're not, you know, 
new anymore so they don't really have that much attention but just because you're the middle child also doesn't mean that you won't get any attention they you still can go to counselors about schedule changes you can still go to teachers with any help you might have and i mean you may look and the upperclassmen do look at you sometimes as like the middle child and they may not treat you as like you know oh you guys are like you know the little babies and stuff and there are a lot of upperclassmen that will treat you like not like upperclassmen of course but they won't treat you like you know like dirt or like scum as a lot of people might say i've seen a lot of these videos where people will say don't talk to upperclassmen because they'll treat you like dirt they're horrible people upperclass most upperclassmen i know are not horrible people um unfortunately there are a lot of uh upperclassmen that will not treat you right but try to find some upperclassmen that won't treat you like dirt there actually are a lot of mature upperclassmen that will treat you with respect and that will treat you like their younger sibling like with dignity and respect and that will help you find your way if you if you're kind of like if you're going to be a sophomore but you're just moving from a different school so you're kind of new in that retrospect so you know just because you know and everything but also there also have been problems where you know you um are becoming a sophomore but at the same time you think that you're not a freshman anymore so you think you can control the freshman and i've seen situations where that happened and i always have to go to that sophomore and um say like um just because you're a sophomore you're not upperclassman yet um you have to act mature you know you're not really in a position to treat people like that because when you grow older people aren't going to treat you with that kind of respect you know and upperclassmen are supposed to be looked at as role models that's just how it is just because you know they that's how it is you're upperclassmen the younger ones are going to look at you when they when they before they get upperclassmen and that's just how it goes and so you don't want the little ones to look like oh that's if they're treating you mean that's how i'm supposed to be because that's not how it's supposed to be and unfortunately that's in some cases that's how it is but that's not actually how it's not supposed to be so hopefully you don't come into a situation like that where you don't treat someone with disrespect because in that kind of case it leads into bullying and bullying is wrong and we've seen cases where bullying gets out of hand and it's not fun at all so basically where best tip comes from is just because you're the middle child doesn't mean that you can't get guidance from teachers but at the same time and also you can't get guidance from upperclassmen but at the same time just because you're a sophomore does not mean you can't control the freshmen that's basically what that tip's about <laughs> all right so tip number three i think this will be your favorite tip for most of you if you haven't already pursued this already um, this is about driver's ed. So at my school, um, this is mostly about, uh, for driver's ed, I took it my sophomore year. Um, it was mostly, it starts at 14 and a half. I don't know why it's 14 and a half. I don't know if it's like that at your school or wherever state or country you live in, wherever you're watching this from. But, um, that's mostly how it was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, driver's ed can be pretty fun. If that's something you want to pursue, you can start it then. Um, if that's what the age limit is where where you are at. Um, driver's ed is also a huge step um, in maturity. It takes maturity and everything to start driving and to start you know learning because it's a huge piece of machinery and you have to have some sort of skill level to actually, you know, drive a car on the road. You're going to be with other adults and young adults who are on the road. And in my state, I live in North Carolina, by the way. Um, so in my state, uh, you can start driving as young as 16. So I know in other states it's the same or different or higher. It depends on where you live. Um, but yeah, so you can start driving at as young as 16. So, you know, there's going to be other adults on the road. There's going to be young adults on the road. Or they're going to just be other 16-year-olds on the road. So, you know, you can't really drive recklessly. You have to make sure you're driving 
with caution. You have to drive and pay attention to where you're going. So if you're going to start driver's ed, just make sure you think you're ready for that step and you make sure that you think you're, you don't have to really think your parents are ready for that step, but they might be paying for it. So maybe you want them to be ready for that step. But, you know, it's really fun to think about, you know, driving and that's something that leads into your adulthood. So it's pretty fun to think about. So if that's something that you want to do, then go right ahead. Sophomore year is the time to think about that and actually, you know, start doing it. So I hope you guys have fun with that if you choose to do it. All right. Uh, fourth tip is uh, testing. Uh, in my sophomore year, I don't know if you guys will do it in your sophomore years or not, um, but at my school, we took these two tests for free. For free, guys. It's cool. Um, it's the PSAT, which stands for Preliminary Scholastic Aptitude, Aptitude Test. It is daily, it's like a pre-SAT test. And you also took the plan, which is the pre-ACT, which also stands for American College Test. And so you basically, again, for free, <laughs> you took those two tests. And um, it shows you like what you see to expect when you actually take the SAT or the ACT because you have to take one of the at least one of those tests to get into college because you you know those are included in college applications which you guys will probably start either late junior year or early senior year I started mine early I started my college applications um, early senior year but I took my tests like in between like late late junior year early senior year and stuff um you in some states you take your act your uh late junior year i took my act for free <laughs> at my school we they uh administered the test at my school um so it's pretty it's pretty long but it shows you what's going to happen they recently just changed the a act and the pre and the psat so you get to uh see what everything I think I might link them down below in the description box like the websites so you just get to see and get a feel for them if you're ready to take that step and everything but I swear they're kind of fun to do all right and tip number five is just to have fun um a lot of these tests kind of freak you out and everything but your sophomore year can be pretty fun my sophomore year was really easy um it might not be easy for you but I hope it is. I hope you guys really have fun with it. Um, and, you know, a lot of people kind of figure out what they want to do in their sophomore year before they actually go to their junior year. Like I said, your junior year might be hard. It might be easy for some of you. It might be hard for some of you. It really just depends on where you go with it. Um, but for me, it was kind of easy. I'm about to be, I actually am a college uh, freshman. I actually just found out a couple minutes ago. I got my room assignments for freshman year and I start college and uh, actually next month so that's fun so I hope you guys really have fun with it um, you guys have two more years left of high school so that's really fun and a lot of people find out kind of what they want to do with their lives in sophomore year a lot of people don't and that's all right you don't have to figure it out right now but Junior year is mostly where you start to figure out where you want to go with your life, and you still have a lot of time left. But high school goes by really quickly, so you want to have as mo a most fun as you want because your childhood really goes by in high school year, in your high school years. And I kind of wish I would have had a lot more fun in my high school years, but I really hope you guys do too. And you know, it's. It's a lifetime. High school, they say high school should be your best times in your life. And I had the most interesting times of my life in high school, and I hope you guys do too. If you have any more suggestions of any videos you guys might want me to do for this back to school series, um, leave some comments down below. Like I said, I might go online and list those PSAT uh, plan test websites in the description if I can find them. Um, also, I also might do a junior year video if anyone's interested in that just to get a really head start on them if you want to. I might do that next week um, if I have time and like I said I'm about to be a college freshman so I'm doing a lot of stuff planning for that but like I said if you guys want to do any other any other 
uh, have any ideas for any other videos you want me guys to do. Like, I think I also might do some college videos, uh, maybe, if I have time. Uh, but like I said, list them anything in the comments, uh, so let me see what you guys may want me to do. Um, so hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't subscribed already, and I'll see you soon. Bye guys!